Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today I am filming a book haul and it's a doozy as they often are on this channel. So strap yourselves in, get yourselves a beverage of some description, sit yourself down. We're going to go through some books today. Um, now I am filming on a camera that I have never used before so please excuse if the sound is a bit odd or if I'm being a bit odd it's because I am um, filming in a completely different way <laughs> to what I'm used to because um, I normally just film everything on my phone so trying out a camera camera today. Um, all right so let's get into it. I'm going to show you um, some of the books that I picked up uh, over the month of July. Um, we're going to start off with one brand new book and then literally every other book that I'm going to show you is going to be a secondhand book because I did a lot of secondhand book shopping. The reason for that is I went on two trips. So I was on two different holidays um, within my state, so not too far away, but I was visiting op shops that I'd not been to before um, and I was able to pick up quite a few interesting things. So how I'm going to do it is I'm going to show you the brand new book that I bought, I'm going to show you the non-fiction books that I bought and then I'm going to show you all of the other fiction books that I bought secondhand. So let's start with the new book. The first one that I picked up is called Wifedom, Mrs. Orwell's Invisible Life by Anna Funder. This has literally just come out. I pre-ordered it like a day or two days before it was shipped. So um, this is brand new. So let me tell you about it because you might not have heard of it. Um, looking for wonder and some reprieve from the everyday, Anna Funder slips into the pages of her hero, George Orwell. As she watches him create his self, his writing self, she tries to remember her own. And when she uncovers his forgotten wife, it's a revelation. Eileen O'Shaughnessy's brilliance, literary brilliance shaped Orwell's work and her practical Naus saved his life. But why and how was she written out of the story? Using newly discovered letters from Eileen to her best friend, Funda recreates the Orwell's marriage through the Spanish Civil War and World War II in London. As she rolls up the screen concealing Orwell's private life, she is led to question what it takes to be a writer and what it is to be a wife. Compelling and utterly original, Wifedom speaks to the unsung work of women everywhere today, while offering a breathtakingly intimate view of one of the most important literary marriages of the 20th century. It is a book that speaks to our present mo moment as much as it illuminates the past. So it sounds really, really interesting. Um, so obviously that's why I picked it up. It's a bit of a thick one. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere in the vicinity of 400 and yeah, 450 pages long. So it's a bit of a bit of a long one, but I think definitely will be worthwhile. All right, let's have a look at the non-fiction books that I picked up secondhand this month. So the first one is this is Your Brain on Music by Daniel Leviton, Understanding a Human Obsession. The call number for this book is 781.11. Um, so this is a book that is all about what happens in our brains when we listen to music. So lots of interesting um, sort of sciencey music stuff. Um, so if that's your vibe, then this book could be for you. Um, another one that I picked up is Ikigai. Um, actually, this is not secondhand. This is brand new also. Dang, <laughs> I thought I had organized this so well. <laughs> um, this is the only other brand new one though. Um, so it's Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life by Hector Gar Garcia and Francesc Miral. Miral? I don't know if that's how you pronounce those names. Apologies if I've gotten them wrong. Um, I literally bought this because um, a friend of mine, a guy that I used to work with, loved this book. Um, I had, he rated it five stars on Goodreads. I gave it a thumbs up and he thought that I'd read it and wanted to have a conversation about it because he was so excited about it. Um, so I kind of like, I'm going off his own, his vibe. So I actually don't know much about this book at all. Um, so it says, the people of Japan believe that everyone has an ikigai, a reason to jump out of bed each morning. Inspiring and comforting, this book will give you the life-changing tools to uncover your personal ikigai. It will show you how to leave urgency behind, find your purpose, nurture friendships, and throw yourself into your passions. So that sounds good. Um, the call number for this one is 158.1. 
Um, another non-fiction title that I picked up this month is called Bush School. Uh, Peter O'Brien is the author. It says, a 20-year-old teacher fresh out of college, a tiny one-teacher school in a paddock miles from anywhere. 18 children aged between 5 and 15. Nothing to it. The call number for this one is 371.10092. Um, and this is all about a teacher from Sydney um, traveling to the middle of nowhere um, to teach at a – be the only teacher – um, for these 18 students and sort of his experiences. So that sounds really, really cool. Um, another one that I was managed to pick up, which I was really excited about because it's a former Stella Prize winner from 2020. This is called See What You Made Me Do by Jess Hill, Power Control and Domestic Abuse. This feels like a really important title. I'm not going to talk too much about what it's about um, because I think you can get the idea from um, the subtitle there. Uh, the call number is 362.82. 920994 um and this one is definitely one that I would love to read um I think it's such an important topic to read about and to um be across um and to kind of like take a deep dive on so definitely worthwhile um a worthwhile find <laughs> um another worthwhile find but for a completely different reason um, is this one a science book called Slime, a natural history by Suzanne Wedlich or Wed Wedlick, um, and this one the call number is five seven one point seven nine. Uh, it says. An original and revelatory ex exploration of the hidden world of slime, the substance upon which we and our world depend. So that sounds pretty interesting. Another good find <laughs> uh, is this one: Unwell Women: A Journey Through Medicine and Myth. In a Man-Made World by Eleanor Cleghorn. Um, this is one that I have heard of before and was um, so I just picked this one up I didn't look any further into it but essentially this is about um, women's bodies and their the relationship between medicine and women's bodies basically um, so that's sort of the the vibe it's also a very thick one so I don't know when I'm going to get to it but I'm excited to have this now in my collection um two more books I already owned this one on my e-reader but I found a physical copy so I thought I'd pick it up um Alana Hill is um a fashion designer that I was really interested in when I was um younger uh so this is her memoir Butterfly on a Pin a Memoir of Love, Despair and Reinvention by Alana Hill. So I was excited to find a physical copy of that one. And this is one that I have read before and really, really enjoyed. I just borrowed it from the library. So um, this was definitely one that I was happy to find a physical copy of as well. This is called Lapsed. Losing Your Religion is Harder Than It Looks by Monica Ducks. Um, and this is all about she's kind of exploring Catholicism and sort of like what it means to be a lapsed Catholic. Um, so the call number for this one is 282.092. Okay, so I it appears that I have bumped the camera. I apologize, I've slightly moved you. Um, <laughs> but let's get on to the fiction now um, and have a look at the books that I picked up, um, secondhand shopping for fiction. The first one is a huge, huge tome hard cover but it's a beautiful cover it's the luminaries by eleanor caton um, this was the winner i think of the women's prize a few years back now um so yeah very exciting to have a copy of this one i've looked at this one multiple times and i've almost picked it up um but the price was right this time so i i decided to pick it up this time um so very excited to have myself a copy of this one uh let's find out what it's about it is 1866 and Walter Moody has come to make his fortune upon the New Zealand goldfields. On the night of his arrival, he stumbles across a tense gathering of 12 local men who have met in secret to discuss a series of unsolved crimes. A wealthy man has vanished, a whore has tried to end her life, and an enormous sum of money has been discovered in the home of a luckless drunk. Moody is soon drawn into the mystery, a network of fates and fortunes that is as complex and exquisitely patterned as the night sky. Um, so, sounds very, very interesting. All right, the next one is The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. Um, the cover of this one is very striking. I, I'm enjoying this cover. <laughs> um, so, this one is, it says, it's 2010, uh, staggeringly successful and brilliant tech entrepreneur, Bix 
Boughton is desperate for a new idea. He's 40 with four kids and restless when he stumbles into a conversation with mostly Columbia professors, one of whom is experimenting with downloading or externalizing memory. Within a decade, Bix's new technology, Own Your Unconscious, is, uh, that allows you to access every memory you've ever had and to share every memory in exchange for access to the memories of others has seduced multitudes, but not everyone. Um, so that sounds really, really fascinating. Um, the next one that I picked up is uh, one called The Seal Wife by Catherine Harrison. Um, this one I wasn't sure about, so I'm not 100% that this is going to be okay. Um, I'm concerned that it might kind of veer into kind of a Pocahontas narrative territory in the sense of it being sort of uh, non-critical of um, the relationship between a white guy and a native woman. Um, but I'm hoping that it has the nuance there. So fingers crossed. If you've read this one and you can tell me one way or the other, I would really appreciate it. Um, so basically we've got a white scientist um, who is stationed in the tiny frontier town of Anchorage, Alaska in 1915, and he builds a weather observatory and a kite big enough to penetrate the heavens and track the great storms that scour the land. He is distracted from his labours when he meets a native, uh, I don't know how to say this, A-L-E-U-T, Alut, Alu, not sure if that's correct or not, uh, woman, a stitcher of furs whose muteness calls up in him an almost unbearable longing. Her ferocious self-containment begins to seem to him more and more animal, and yet the more her silence pushes him away, the more he burns to possess her. And when she disappears, he starts to believe he'll die if he never sees her again. So that's what I mean about it being like, this could go either way. Like it could have the self-reflection to be um, a really interesting, like, novel that's kind of exploring that possessiveness and and like looking to you know um think about it in a in a critical way or it could be not critical at all um so yeah we'll we'll see we'll have to see for this one <laughs> all right moving on to another one that is hopefully less potentially problematic this one is called the burnt country boy by joy Rhodes. um i already own another book by her i think it's called the wool growers companion yes the wool growers companion um i own it i haven't read it yet um uh, but i saw this one and so i thought i'd pick it up so i actually don't know anything about it um but as with the wool growers companion this is set in australia um back and this one is set in 1948 um, and so it's sort of like a pastoral kind of situation. Um, so that's what, what these books are about. We won't go into de too much detail. Um, another one that I picked up is called The Secret S Scripture by Sebastian Barry. Um, again, I don't know much about this one. It just uh, sounded like an, an intriguing title. Um, so here we, say, here we are. Roseanne McNulty, perhaps nearing her 100th birthday, no one is quite sure, faces an uncertain future as the Ro Roscommon Regional Mental Hospital, where she spent the best part of her adult life, prepares for closure. Over the weeks leading up to the, this upheaval, she talks often with her psychiatrist, Dr. Green. Or Dr. Gren? Green. G-R-E-N-E? Green? Not sure. Uh, this relationship, guarded but trusting after so many years, intensifies and complicates as Dr. Green mourns the death of his wife. Told through their respective journals, the story that emerges of Roseanne's family in 1930s Sligo, Sligo is at once shocking and deeply beautiful. Refracted through the haze of memory and retelling, Roseanne's story becomes an alternative secret history of Ireland. Exquisitely written, it is the story of a life blighted by terrible mistreatment and ignorance and yet marked still by love and passion and hope. That sounds really good. <laughs> I'll have to get to that one sooner rather than later, I think. Um, another one that I got a copy of is Ruth Ozeki's A Tale for the Time Being. Um, so this is uh, Ruth Ozeki who won the Women's Prize last year. Um, so I, again, haven't read, I own, but haven't read 
her um, prize winning book but this one um, I saw and I thought I'll pick it up because the price was right as is always the way with these uh, secondhand bookshops. Um, the other one that I picked, uh, not the other one, there's still quite a few more. Um, another one that I picked up is called Heloise, Forbidden Love in a Hostile World by Mandy Hager. Um, I really like books that are sort of have this kind of vibe to them, um, sort of maybe medieval times, maybe slightly different times, but like the past in that kind of area and sort of touching on religion um, and sort of like, uh, especially if the character is feisty, a feisty woman that's kind of interacting with um, with religion in a in an interesting way. That's my jam. That is definitely my jam. Um, so it says, what happens when the 12th century's most famous lovers are caught in the crossfire of factions, religious reform and blind ambition? Heloise is a determined young woman with an exceptional mind, longing to pursue learning rather than marriage or life as a cloistered nun. Her path inevitably crosses with Peter Abelard, the celebrity philosopher, theologian and master at Paris's famed cathedral school. When two such brilliant minds meet and engage, sparks are likely to ignite, but theirs is an impossible love. This is a time when the Gregorian reforms are starting to bite and celibacy among the clergy and church officials is being rigorously imposed. So this sounds really, really interesting. Another book that sort of is set in a similar sort of period of time um, is called Book of Colours by Robin Cadwallader. Um, I read a book by this author called The Anchoress that I really, really liked. I thought it was brilliant. Um, so yeah, I am hoping this will also be brilliant. This one is set in 1321, so relatively not too far distant from the previous book that we just talked about. Um, so it says, London, 1321, in a small shop in Paternoster Row, three people are drawn together around the creation of a magnificent illuminated prayer book. Even though the commission seems to answer the aspirations of each one of them, their secrets, desires and ambitions threaten its completion. As each struggles to see the book come into being, it will change everything they have understood about their place in the world. Rich, deep, sensuous and full of life, Book of Colours is also, most movingly, a profoundly beautiful story about creativity and connection and our instinctive need to understand our world and communicate with others through the pages of a book. So that one sounds pretty good also, so I'm excited to get to that one. Um, the next one I've got is called The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. Um, the cover looks delightful. Um, so this one... Let me see if I've got a summary about the book. Oh, it's just on the back, Kelly. What are you doing? <laughs> all right, so this one is all about, um, so it's set on the island of Jeju. The island of sea women follows Mia, Mija and Young Suk, two girls from very different backgrounds, as they begin working in the sea with their village's all-female diving collective. Over, the, over many decades, through the Japanese colon, uh, colonialism of the 1930s and 40s, World War II, the Korean War, and the era of cell phones and wetsuits for the women divers, Mi Ja and Young Suk develop the closest of bonds, but after hundreds of dives and years of friendship, forces outside their control will push their relationship to the breaking point. So that sounds really, really interesting too, like an interesting setting. Uh, this is one that I sort of didn't really know much about, but um, I know this author, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, is sort of everywhere everywhere right now, so I was happy to sort of just take a chance on this one. It's called Velvet Was the Night. Um, so she's the author of Mexican Gothic, which I haven't read, um, and I think I might have a copy of somewhere, but I haven't read it yet. Um, but this is not the, the same type of book as Mexican Gothic. This is a, um, a noir. So it is, uh a riveting noir about daydreaming with secretary and a lonely enforcer and the missing woman they are both hunting. 1970s Mexico City, while student protests and political unrest consume the city, Mater Mate, Mate, finds escape from her, hum, her humdrum life in the stories of passion and danger um, filling the latest issue of Secret Romance. She is deeply envious of her neighbour, Leonora, a beautiful art student who lives the life of excitement and intrigue 
that she craves. So when she disappears, Mate Mater, I don't know how to say that name. <laughs> I feel like I'm mispronouncing it every single time, and I probably am. Uh, she jumps at the chance to uncover her secrets. Uh, but she's not the only one searching. Elvis, a goon for hire who is longing to escape his violent life, has been assigned to find the student. Um, and he likes old movies, comics, and rock and roll, just like Mater. And he's beginning to get interested in the mousy secretary who is fast becoming involved in a world of political intrigue. So it sounds like it should be an interesting read. Um, this one I picked up just because I know it's a current... Um, I think it was even, it's even a 2023. Let me just check that. Yeah, so this came out this year. Um, so this one is called Homecoming by Kate Morton. Um, and so when I found a second half copy of it, even though I haven't ever read any Kate Morton before, I thought I'd give it a try. Um, so this is set in 1959, Adelaide Hills, Christmas Eve, at the end of a scorching hot day. Beside a creek in the grounds of a grand country house, a local man makes a terrible discovery. Police are called and the small town of Tambilla becomes embroiled in one of the most baffling murder investigations in the history of South Australia. Um, many years later and thousands of miles away, Jess is a journalist in search of a story. Having lived and worked in London for nearly two decades, she now finds herself unemployed and struggling to make ends meet. A phone call summons her back to Sydney where her beloved grandmother Nora, who raised Jess when her mother could not, has suffered a fall and is seriously ill in hospital. At Nora's house, Jess discovers a true crime book chronicling a long buried police case, the Turner family tragedy of 1959. It is only when Jess skims through its pages that she finds a shocking connection between her own family and this notorious event, a murder mystery that has never been satisfactorily resolved. An epic story that spans generations, Homecoming asks what we would do for those we love, how we protect the lies we tell, and what it means to come home. Above all, it is an intricate and spellbinding novel from one of the finest writers working today. So that sounds really good. Um, another Australian author uh, is Garth Nix, and I picked this one up, The Sinister Booksellers of Bath, um, which I believe is the sequel to The Left-Handed Booksellers of London, which I also have a copy of somewhere. I can't find it right now, but I will, um, because I believe this is the second one. So I saw it, I thought I'd just pick it up. Um, uh, yeah, so I... I'm not going to read to you about this book because it's a sequel so I don't want to spoil anything for myself because I haven't read the first one but also for you so I won't I won't read this it might just be in the same universe I'm not sure um, another one that I picked up and this is the last of the larger format um, fiction books that I've got in this haul is The Bullet That Missed by Richard Oseman um, this is from the Thursday Murder Club mystery series I don't know if this is the second one or the third one I am not sure. I think this could be the second one. Potentially. I cannot tell. Yeah. Um, anyway, so again, because this is a sequel, I won't read what happened, but I believe the Thursday Murder Club is set in a um, an old people's home, uh, like a nursing home, and that they are solving crimes somehow and this is one of them in this series um, so let me just grab my final stack to show you um, these are my smaller format fiction books that I've picked up and there's one two three four five six seven more to show you um, so the first of those is lost in a good book by Jasper Ford um, this is a sequel also and it is a sequel to um, the the Air Affair, which is a book that my husband has been trying to get me to read for ages, um, but because I haven't, I haven't read Jane Eyre, I don't know if th I, that's necessary to know J the story of Jane Eyre to kind of get the Air Affair, because it's that Air Jane Eyre, um, and then this is the sequel to it. So I won't read the synopsis because I read it last night, the synopsis, and it kind of spoils the air affair. So I won't read that out, but, but basically this is the second one in that. I have read a Jasper Ford book before, um, the title of which is escaping me right at this moment, um, and I did really enjoy it. So I think I will enjoy these books also. 
um, I don't see a list of his books, so I will put I'll put the title up on the screen for you. Um, but yeah, so this is the sequel to The Air Affair, which I will at some point get around to reading, especially because my husband's very very keen on it. Um, the next one is a former Miles Franklin Literary Award winner from 2010, and it's Truth by Peter Temple. Um, I don't know anything about this, but I sort of have at the back of my head this vague plan that I would like to read all of the previous winners of the Miles Franklin Award. Maybe not all of them. I don't know. There's a lot. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to read all of them. But um, I thought I saw it. I thought I'd grab it because um, I, you know, just in case I decide to do that. Or maybe I just really like the sound of this book. So let's have a look. Over a few sweltering summer days as the countryside burns and his superiors scheme and jostle, Inspector Stephen Villani finds all the certainties of his life are crumbling. Truth is a novel about a man, a family, a city. It is about violence, love, murder, honour and deceit. And it is about truth. So it sounds interesting. Uh, although that is a very vague synopsis of the story. Just putting that out there. All right, the next one is um, something that looked a bit light and fluffy, but I'm a big tea drinker and I couldn't go past the picture that was on the front cover. It's called The Tea Chest by Josephine Moon. Um, I'm expecting that this is going to be a bit of a fluffy book, but sometimes that's what you need. Um, so it says, Kate Fullerton, talented tea designer and now co-owner of The Tea Chest, could never have imagined that she'd risk her young family's future to save her fledgling business. Meanwhile, Layla Morton has just lost her job. And if Elizabeth Clancy had known today was the last, was the day she would appear on the nightly news she might at least have put on some clothes um, both need to move on when Kate Leela and uh, or Layla sorry and Elizabeth's paths cross they throw themselves into realizing Kate's vision of the newest and most delectable tea shop in London the tea chest an enchanting witty novel about the unexpected situations life throws at us and how love and friendship help us through written with heart and infused with the seductive scents of bergamo indian spices lemon rose and caramel it's a world you won't want to leave sounds delightful um the next one is uh winter by ali smith i already own autumn um i found that secondhand shopping a while back um so I am sort of vaguely on the lookout for the other two from this series because at some point I want to read them um, and I believe Autumn is the first one so I want to kind of read them in order and do you know all, all four so if you find a have a hot tip on where I can get a, a, myself a copy of um, the summer and spring books that are from this series I would much appreciate it. Uh, the next one is a book by Miriam Taves called A Complicated Kindness. Um, this one I is an author by, I've heard um, uh, Rick McDonnell, who is currently not making videos um, at the moment, but I will link to uh, his channel up in the cards. Um, he read and uh, read a book by Miriam Taves and was sort of raving about her a while back. So I've every time I see a book that is written by her, I just go pick it up. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have no idea what this one is about, but it is by Miriam Tave. So it's uh, now in my collection. So excited to get to that one. This one I'm a bit iffy about. I've heard mixed things about it, but I thought I found it. So I thought I'd pick it up. It's the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, so yeah, I, I've heard that it is a bit pithy. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be for me or not, but it seemed like it was, it's pretty short. So I thought I would maybe maybe give it a try we'll see um and the last one is a book that i have already read but didn't own a copy of and it is the invention of wings by sue monk kid um sue monk kid is an author that i have enjoyed the books of for a very long time um the first one i read was of course the secret life of bees that was sort of her big breakout um uh hit that um that she wrote but it was literally i like i read it maybe I don't know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. So it was a long time ago. Um, so yeah, maybe it hasn't held up. I don't know, but I, I did enjoy this book, um, which is sort of told from um, alternating perspectives um, between a girl who is a slave and um, a daughter within the household um, uh, who is given this slave as her birthday present. And she's like, I don't want to, 
I don't want to have a bar of that. Um, I don't want a slave. Like, so she's, it's sort of, uh, about this kind of these, like how they interact together and like what their lives are like and, and sort of how they kind of, uh, so it's kind of like on the cusp of change, but like two people who don't have agency for different reasons. And so it's sort of like, it's exploring that kind of difference between them, but also some of the ways um, in which their lives overlap and where they have side kind of commonalities and where they just do not understand each other at all. And um, especially, um, uh, yeah. So Sarah is the, is the girl who owns handful the, um, who is the, uh, um, the slave, uh, and Sarah sort of has this, these kind of like up and down moments of just being completely oblivious and then kind of having some, you know, realizations about things. So yeah, that's the invention of wings by Sumat Kid. I read it a few years ago and I quite enjoyed it. So, um, if that sounds like up your alley, then you might like to find yourself a copy as well. All right. So that is my book haul for the month of July. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I'm not going to enjoy finding places for all of these books on my shelves because there are a lot and I do not have a lot of space. So, um, yeah, we'll have to maybe have to do an unhaul. I think I said that last time as well. Um, and I still haven't done it. So maybe I need to have a look at what's on my shelves and decide if there's anything there that I don't particularly think I'm going to get to maybe move it along. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.